Alright, I am back with another Destiny 2 video. Uh, I wasn't able to get to a TWAB video yesterday, but pretty much the highlights of the TWAB were just... We're getting some new Strand weapons, and I think Iron Banner, and one of the Playlist weapons, I think. And then like Loaded Question and Randy's are coming back, uh, now with random rolls. So... That's fun, uh, but not too, too much to cover there. They didn't, like, show any of the weapons, really. Um, but I'm always down for more strand things, considering we only have uh, a scarce handful right now and are missing a lot of different types. Um, instead, I wanted to kind of dive deeper into the article I wrote today that seems to be uh, resonating with some people. Um, this is about loot in Destiny and how it's so weirdly stingy in a lot of ways. Um... This is partially inspired by the return of Iron Banner, which I think has long had one of the worst loot systems in the game. It got a little bit better with the revamp of the vendor, and yet still kind of bad in a lot of ways. Uh, and then also there was a really good uh, Reddit thread about this that I saw a few days ago that um, is sort of covering the same thing. And when I get ideas from Reddit, I always credit Reddit. So <laughs> in this case, that was a good thread. Uh, and then also just playing the game, you can recognize a lot of these issues. Uh, the idea is that in many, many aspects of the game, Destiny 2 is weirdly stingy with loot for a looter shooter. And there are plenty of games to compare it to, Diablo, Borderlands, you know, going back to Outriders, things like that. Uh, the Division, where there are, are not only more loot drops, but it, in some ways it's easier to farm stuff. And like what Destiny is doing with many, many, many of its activities just seems... It, <laughs> Ungenerous? Is that a word? Yeah, ungenerous. Uh, we'll go with that. Uh, in a, a couple areas, it's like, it's fine, which is a little strange because it seems like they've realized that to a certain extent. So in some places you will see kind of what I would consider generous loot, including one place uh, this season. But in so many of these other places, it is very odd. So uh, I'm going to kind of go through my article here. The first thing is world drops. Uh, this is a looter shooter where very, very little loot actually drops from the wild. Um, you know, in a lot of games, you kill monsters, they drop loot. That's how it works. Uh, in Destiny, that is barely how it works. Um, we have moved away from blues now. Not that blues were, like, a good drop in the first place. Uh, lots of games have garbage loot drops as part of their, you know, large collections of loot they drop. That is not unusual. The problem with blues in Destiny was that you, you were forced to pick it up. So, like, imagine being forced to pick up every white or blue item that you walked over in Diablo. And if you didn't, it would go to like, you know, your, your vault or something in town, your chest. Like that was the problem with that system. It wasn't necessarily that blues existed. It's that you were forced to pick them up. So now the blues are gone. I believe they changed it. So either they decrypt into glimmer or, or sometimes they're a legendary drop instead. But the problem with legendary drops in destiny is that they are limited to two things, a, a world drop, which, you know, there there are some good world drops sometimes. Uh, Funnel Web was a really good world drop recently. This time around, there's this new um, uh, Breach Grenade Launcher, a wave frame that can have destabilizing rounds. That's really good. Uh, there are some, the new Battle Scar with um, Kinetic Tremors is good. Uh, but, like, you know, not that many, and there was no way to really farm them. Uh, the beer best pet is to just watch Banshee for his random rolls of loot, some of which are world drops, some of which aren't, um, and get them that way. And then the other half of world drop loot is armor. And all world drop armor is absolutely trash for anyone that is not a brand new new light because that cannot roll uh, high stats at all. So you are a world drop is not going to be something that's a higher power level that you can use for infusion, nor is it going to ever, ever, ever be something. 99.999% of the time that you would want to invest in and like masterwork uh, because it there's a cap and I think the cap is either 60 or 61 I think for world drop and it's like rare it gets that high uh, that might as well be a blue at, at this rate like at least you're getting some legendary shards from that uh, and things like that but that is it um, so that is not like that is all the loot that ever drops in the wild that's it uh, and things like um, enhancement cores if you <laughs> pop a finest matter weave, but that is literally it. And that I do not think is a great system for the wild. I think that needs to be expanded. Um, I didn't really cover this in the article, but I think like if you're running at Defiance Battlegrounds, like you should have a chance to drop 
seasonal loot from that. Or if you're running a Vanguard Ops list, maybe sometimes you get a, you know, a random world drop of one of the Vanguard weapons. Or if you're playing Gambit, maybe you kill a blocker and it drops a trust sometimes. Like, something like that. Uh, but, like, this transitions into the playlist activities where I see absolutely no reason that Vanguard Ops playlists and Gambit, and I guess Crucible, should not be guaranteed to drop one of the playlist weapons on every completion. No reason not to. It is beyond, like, it feels terrible to finish a Gambit match or Vanguard Ops playlist and get nothing but Glimmer. And if you're maxed on Glimmer, uh, you get like four Legendary Shards for completing Vanguard Ops playlist. And in the PsyOps Legendary playlist, uh, you get nothing. The chest does not contain anything. So you just finish and you're done. You have done that for no reason at all. <laughs> um, that is not a good system uh, at all. I think it should be a guaranteed drop. Crucible is weird because Crucible does seem to drop one or two autumn wins like all of the time. I don't know what's different about Crucible to do that. That's one of the frustrations with Iron Banner is like you're trying to get Iron Banner loot and you just get a million autumn wins. Um, autumn wins is actually okay, but like the point is, is like it feels the other two feel way behind Crucible and even Crucible isn't necessarily a guaranteed drop every time, but I don't know why it's different. Um, this I think this would also help if it was a guaranteed drop uh, the legendary shard economy and the enhancement core economy because it would at least be another four shards or whatever if it's something that you would dismantle. Um, so I, I don't see a reason not to reward at least one piece of loot for clearing a 10-15 minute strike or a 8 minute gambit game or whatever they are now. Um, no reason not to do that. Uh, going further down, special crucible events, Iron Banner and Trials should drop loot from those activities. Iron Banner, I don't see any reason not to guarantee an Iron Banner drop as long as you're not, like, jumping off the edge to finish the game faster, which there should be some sort of detection for that. You should get a at least an armor or weapons drop uh, every time. Every time. I don't see a reason not to do that. And, like, yes, some Iron Banner armor is somewhat high stat and whatever, but, and you know, but I, I don't think all of the loot should be jammed into the vendor system alone with the engrams. If you want to focus loot, that's great. That's what that's there for. You can take an engram and focus it in whatever you want, and that's a good way to farm specific items. But And, like, there is a random drop chance in Iron Banner. It's just ridiculously low, and it has always been ridiculously low. This was worse when we just had the four bounties and there was no focusing system, and you would just spam engram or spam Iron Banner medallions or whatever they're called to turn in. So like we, there's a little bit. It's a little bit better now with the vendor system, but no reason not to just dump Iron Banner loot on people when it's Iron Banner. Trials, you know, I it's a little different, and I can see being a little more stingy there. But I also see no reason for there not to be at least a chance of a weapon or a piece of armor to drop after a trials match, maybe a trials win, something like that, because the current system is just. Farming rep for engrams, and the only way you can like farm uh, trials is to get a seven win card and then keep playing on that card to get engrams sometimes, and the drop rates of that are not low. Like, keep adept weapons behind flawless, keep farming on a flawless card to get more adept weapons. I don't even know what the full system is now because I'm not going <laughs> flawless, but um, you know, we, you can keep the elite loot for whatever, but like. It is really, it does not feel good to just farm rep to slowly crawl your way to engrams. And again, if you want to focus stuff, that's what the engrams are for. But I see no reason with the trials loot pool not to have random drops within that to some degree. Uh, and then, so here's the only like truly generous farm in the game right now. That is Season of Defiance. Season of Defiance, the, the rewards for those are pretty crazy. Like, you will finish a Defiant Battleground on normal, not even Legend, and you will get, you will open the chest at the end because keys are really easy to come by now. You're not, like, you know, lacking in currency and stuff. You will get one or two weapons or armor pieces. You will open the chest and get, th like, two to five engrams, which you can either just turn in for more drops or you can focus them for specific drops. It's like seven pieces of loot per run. So like that that is one area where they are just dumping loot on you. And as a result, I got all my red borders, I don't know, two or three weeks in and crafted them. And like I'm still leveling them up, so it's not like I'm not grinding at all. But I got all that loot very quickly. If you don't want to craft stuff, you just want to go for random rolls, you get a ton of loot to choose from there. 
Um, that I think is in a really good place. The the exception there is this sword thing where there's the one engram where it can either give you a shotgun or one of the, t the three class swords. You literally have to turn in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of engrams in order to get five borders for the class swords. You'll get the shotgun eventually because it's 50% of the time every time, but like it does take forever. I think I did 120 engrams to get my final red border for the throne cleaver. Is it crown split or throne cleaver? I think it's throne cleaver. Um, and it, it can take an absurdly long time. However, I sort of understand that because because of the generosity with the other stuff and how fast you can craft the other stuff, you're still getting all of these engrams. Like you're getting a bazillion engrams. So I get that the, it's kind of exists as just an extra engram dump. And I think if you're just playing stuff, like if you get if you're playing playlist activities, you are randomly getting two engrams at a time sometimes, you know, every one and every three things. If you keep playing Defiance List just to farm out engrams, you can pretty routinely be getting five engrams per 12 minute battleground so like i sort of get why that exists even though it the drop rates are pretty ridiculous and like you can go you can dump 100 engrams into something and that's your red border but i kind of get it what is bad and what i think most people are struggling with right now are the neo muno weapons to craft those uh that is a really weird situation because the only the only dedicated farm in that is is terminal overload where you're getting a specific weapon every time you complete terminal overload on a specific day, rotating through three. But those are not those are weapons you don't craft. So you're just searching for random rolls on that. And like, I, you know, I, that, I think that's an okay farm because you're at least guaranteed, you know, one copy of that weapon every time. The hard part becomes crafting the Neo Muna um, patrol weapons where if, you don't, if you're only a one character, it's really hard because if you have three characters, at least you're getting you probably got three red frames of a lot of the weapons just from playing the main quest line uh, or doing some of the mini side quests. They give you a lot of guaranteed red borders there. But even like getting the last ones, it's only the only sources are uh, Neo Muna rank with Nimbus or gold patrols. Gold patrols are guaranteed to give you a weapon, but when the weapon red border drop rate is like one in 20, it feels terrible. And eventually I, I did get them all. It took a lot of grinding, like a metric ton of grinding those patrols. You can grind for hours and not get a red bar theoretically with those. And I think I got my last one from a Nimbus rank up. This is one area where it's like, why can't kills sometimes drop Neomuna patrol weapons? Like why does it have to be two extremely limited sources there? Like why am I only getting world drops um, from there? doesn't really make sense to me and the throne world kind of had something similar when crafting was first introduced there was sort of an exploit where you could run the throne world on like a character that didn't own or on a platform that didn't own witch queen and it was like giving you only throne world weapons and like that was a way to kind of cheese it but like trying to get the throne world weapons crafted and that after that was patched is, is almost as much of a nightmare too so that is one issue with these patrol weapons that i think they really have to figure out um, and then we finally arrive at Exotics, and Exotics is the big news story of the week. I talked about it in the blog post they did, but I haven't really expanded on it. The exotic system is still weird and bad, I think, and I still think there's too stingy with them. Um, there are so many exotics in the game now, and it's not just that you have to get the exotic you're looking for. You need a high stat distribution, and you need the right stat distribution, and your plus 10 ghost mod is not going to do it for you a lot of the time. And the sources are just so limited. So you, you get a wild exotic engram once in a blue moon. Like you get a prime engram like once every three or four legendary drops. And then you get an exotic engram like once every three or four prime engrams. I think it's something like that. But the point is, is it takes a while. So they're effectively become two sources, Lost Sectors and Nightfalls. Um, Lost Sectors got buffed a little bit. I think it's like one in three runs now for... An exotic engram and like once you're leveled up a bit they don't feel as hard as they used to so it's like not the worst um nightfalls got much harder <laughs> uh, not only the nightfalls they've picked this time but the minus 15 power delta you can't over level for them uh and a lot of them are just ridiculously hard now you also have to get uh platinum clears to even really have a chance at getting the high-end rewards like an exotic uh even on legend um there was a bug in uh the Lake of Shadows right now, where if you wipe on the boss, you will automatically get silver because it is spawning champions like out of the map and saying you didn't kill them. 
so you will get nothing. I got like an enhancement core uh, the last time I did that because we had one boss wipe uh, with that stupid ass arena. Um, so it, it's still not really a good system. And then focusing, as I kind of mentioned, like, you know, focusing one specific expansions, uh, uh, exotics for one legendary shard still feels like way too much of gamble. Like it's already, you know, you're gambling in lost sectors for all the slots, but like now to gamble, it costs for slightly better odds. It costs an ascendant shard. I don't think that's very good. Uh, and then the, the exact focusing it's it's only for super end game players. Like if you are running high level nightfalls and I guess trials consistently, you may have an overabundance of ascendant shards that you can spam uh, to do these end games. Although you can't spam them because you're also going to need uh, all these exotic ciphers, which require a good amount of just playlist grinding. Also, so it's not just like you can spam all your saved up shards. Uh, that cost I think is too high. I don't think most people will engage with that system, honestly, at those rates. I think these people who are like professional Nightfall runners who have loaded up, who have masterworked all these exotics in their in their vault um, because they just ran out of space. Yeah, sure, that's good for them for going for exact roles on specific exotics, but that is not solving the problem. I think what people wanted to see was some way to target exotics while running activities, while running a Lost Sector, while running a Nightfall, not another currency sink um i don't think that is the right solution there and i think world drop night uh, world drop exotics are too stingy i shouldn't have to play you know full three days to see an exotic drop doesn't really make sense to me um and then we arrive at what's probably okay like if, if seasonal stuff right now is generous the things that are like okay that i don't know if we can really complain about are dungeon and raid loot that seems okay, especially now that they've made a lot of stuff farmable. So it's not just like your one run per week trying to get, you know, the thing. They're even changing stuff with the raid exotics a little bit and like upping your chances based on triumphs and things. And that's a good, that's a good system. Um, I don't really, and like you can have guaranteed red borders from the raid chest. Uh, the worst dungeon thing that happened recently was trying to get the red borders for duality like those two weapons but the drop rate was just goof like ridiculously low and they, they sort of buffed that but it seems like they're not it seems like they're moving away from crafting dungeon weapons and they just want you to farm the random rolls i don't have like too too many problems with that system the, the one issue now uh with the dungeon with um spire is that they took the the hand cannon and the seraph carbine and now that's world loot so you're sharing a world loot pool like you're just getting a world drop you know in some of those encounters now which is terrible that's a terrible thing that feels awful um so that should just be all dungeon loot and they should have two more dungeon specific weapons if they are going to it already felt bad to have like reprisals of those buried in there and then now they just made a world loot so that makes no sense to me but um otherwise i think like the rate of drops the farmability of that stuff that's okay. That's not something I think is a, is a major problem compared to the other loot issues in the game. Uh, I don't know if any of this is going to change. Like, the biggest change to loot coming is this exotic focusing. And I, it doesn't really even seem like this is on Bungie's radar. They Their big solution to, like, loot gain was the vendor grinds. So they made all the vendors have ranks. They give you engrams at the end of that. And that just... That becomes a currency sink, essentially. Like, if you want to focus stuff, you will blow through a lot of your shards. They did reduce shard costs, so it's not, like, the worst thing. But, you know, it's still not, like, the best system. And I still I, I still don't think it's an overly generous system. Even if you have a bazillion Crucible Engrams, we have... I don't know if you were following Salta Grevo's thread, where he was trying to get one rocket launcher that I think had two perks in one of the slots and then one perk in the other slot. It took him 29 resets. <laughs> 29 full crucible resets to get the one roll he wanted and i guess in some ways this is a problem crafting solves although you can't have multiple perks and crafted weapons uh but I, I don't think you know people hunting for five out of five or whatever multiple perk rolls uh are in a position where that is you know by by giving them one drop randomly at the end of every game don't think that's going to you know kill the grind completely and i think you can do something to be that generous uh and then just with Iron Banner running this week, I think it's even more apparent when you're getting one Iron Banner drop every five games, seven games. I don't know. It's very low. But so those are kind of my expanded thoughts on the whole 
Uh, loot issue, I don't think any of these changes I'm proposing here would like negate the grind or negate anything. It, I think it would just make things that feel like almost non-existently rewarding, like feel at least a little more rewarding or like you might get something you could actually use, uh, which I don't think is the case now. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon. Take care.